All right, man, peace. So public head of the UFC, Dana White, stopped by the Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman show to discuss the mega fight that is on the horizon between Conor McGregor and Khabib Nurmagomedov. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Yes, Connor is back. McGregor making his much anticipated return to the Octagon at UFC 229. That is October 6th. Who better to talk about it than UFC press Dana White? So good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Is that guy the best showman in combat sports since Muhammad Ali? Uh, he's the greatest. All I, I, mean, all I mean, he puts on a show. All I want to say. Well, he's definitely up there. In regards to pure trash talk, McGregor might be the best that I've seen other than Muhammad Ali. Connor takes Floyd Mayweather's style of trash talk and then ratchets it up a whole other level. That's truly what he does because he's not worried about getting personal. He'll talk about people's mothers, their wives, their kids, their fathers, their religion. He'll go all the way there with it. He's an extremely intense person. And I truly believe that he has that warrior spirit where he's not scared to die. And I'm sure that people will say, well, how about how many times he's tapped out? I'm just talking about that mental zone that he gets into to hype himself up. To prep himself you have to have that little bit of samurai mentality within you where you're not scared to give your life particularly in the most crucial moments in combat sports i truly believe that and i think that all elite level combat sports athletes are like that ali was like that because you cannot tell me that he did not consider the possibility that he could be permanently damaged before the first list in fight or before the fight with george foreman or during the fight in Manila with Joe Frazier. There's no way that you cannot tell me that. Any elite level combat sports athlete knows that there's a zone that they have to take their mind to so that they can get their body to follow. But the thing with McGregor is that, as I stated, he'll go personal. And I'm trying to think of any other top level combat sports athletes who are as vicious with the trash talk game as Conor McGregor. Hector Macho Camacho was out there as well. Bernard Hopkins, in regards to some of the antics that he would pull at the press conferences, of course he was out there. But in regards to wit, I can't think of any successful combat sports athletes on the level of Ali and Conor McGregor. And of course, Floyd would be just a level beneath them in regards to his trash talk game. I want to say to you is this. With Floyd Money Mayweather two weeks, two and a half weeks before his fight with McGregor, I, he was so grateful of course, for McGregor. He, he said, I thought I was good at this. I thought I was the best at this. He said, this guy right here is, I, I mean, if you're Floyd, promotional, you get promotional, eight, promo, he said, he, you get he, nine figures this for guy McGregor. Yes. This, guy this, guy this guy McGregor. Because this guy's carrying the McGregor. This guy I remember when Floyd Mayweather got out of prison and he had to fight Robert Guerrero. And if you watch the All Access, the, the documentary on Showtime, when Floyd was about to fight Robert Guerrero. One of the mind games that Floyd Mayweather played on Robert Guerrero was he made him take on most of the duties in promoting the fight. And it wore out Guerrero in the early part of his training camp. But Floyd knew that he could do that with Guerrero because Guerrero was just happy to get the fight with Floyd. Now when it came to Conor, all the trash talk just came natural. And it was in the process of building this mega fight. And to be quite frank with you, I think that Floyd looked at Conor during the promotion of their bout and he said to himself you know what this guy is who i used to be when i was young and maybe a little bit more in regards to being willing to build a fight it was very clear that floyd had never encountered a person like that <laughs> with with the talk game that conor mcgregor had it was it was truly out of this world in regards to how obvious it was that mcgregor was willing to go to any lengths to create a level of antipathy between himself and Mayweather in promotion of the fight. Conor McGregor is a money maker. He's more than fulfilled his end of the bar. He couldn't stop raving about McGregor. The then M McGregor also fight, fought his butt off once the opening. That's, that's right. That's, that's the thing. Well, McGregor did the best that he could. He did the best that he could. But it was very clear that Floyd carried him. The thing, you know, pe people talk about, oh, he talks, he talks, he talks, but he backs it up. And that's what, the, the, the reason he's one of the biggest stars in all of sports, forget about mixed martial arts, is because Max and I talk about this, you know, the guy comes off a two-year layoff, and that's from fighting Mayweather, not fighting in mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. And what does he do? He comes after the biggest, baddest beast in the sport, Khabib. The guy is 26 and 0. To go 26 and 0 in the sport It's impossible. Is, exactly. Because there's no... Well, obviously it's not impossible because Khabib has done it. 
And that's why I stated at the press conference that it appeared to me that Connor was trying to calm his own nerves and hype himself up to play the crazy guy to see if he could intimidate Khabib. And I saw no intimidation in Khabib. Once again, this is a very, very real fight. This is a very real threat for Conor McGregor. And if Conor's able to defeat Khabib, now he starts to be considered the UFC version of Muhammad Ali. A guy who talks all type of craziness and then is able to defeat fighters that he's really not supposed to defeat. So we're going to see what happens. Of course, Conor's not the most talented UFC fighter ever. That goes to guys like Anderson Silver and John Bones Jones. But just in regards to the aura that he's able to create around himself, if he were to be able to defeat Nurmagomedov, now he goes up into the realm of a Muhammad Ali. Because that's what Ali would do. Ali would beat fighters that he was prognosticated to lose to. No soft, the gimmies can take you out at any moment of the fight. Exactly. But I throw this at both of y'all. How did you feel? Because I saw you on TV after he attacked the bus in Brooklyn. You were really, really ticked off or whatever. Yeah, some people out there that thought it was some kind of promotional tactic on the part of McGregor or what have you. Yeah. But I'm like... Yes, I remember that. And I even did a video on that event in the aftermath of it where I stated that it was ridiculous to believe that that could possibly have been a staged event. You're putting yourself and many of your comrades in a position where they could be permanently damaged. There's no way that that was a staged event. When you stage something, you create a controlled environment. Even in scenarios where people actually get hurt or killed, it has to be a controlled environment. 9-11 was a controlled environment. The atmosphere that Connor created when he and his friends tried to bum rush that bus, that was not controlled. That was complete anarchy. So it was clear that he was operating according to, to thug rules. And he was trying to show not only Khabib, but also the other fighters on the UFC roster, as well as the fighters in his own camp, that he was not going to allow himself to be bullied. Because if he had let that slide, that would have been like one of those situations like back in the day in the hip-hop world where you would hear stories about a rapper encountering another rapper and just smacking the shit out of him. And of course, they never talked about it on camera. But you would hear about it and you would say, oh, is that true? And it would make somebody look bad if you allowed that rumor to persist and carry on. Connor knew that if he did, if he did not do something drastic in regards to what Khabib did to, uh, to one of the people in his retinue, in regards to Khabib smacking, smacking up one of the guys in his entourage or in his retinue in a hotel hallway. If he didn't do something about it that was drastic and public, that he would lose face with the guys in his camp, with other UFC fighters, and with fans if they found out about it. So that's what all that was really about. That was not a stage event. I'm like, nah, 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 that's McGregor, that's McGregor, it seems like him. You know, how are you feeling about him now? But what people don't understand is what happened was Earlier that week, Habib and his team had gone after one of uh, um, Connor's guys, you know, Artem. And they're, they're, they're very, very good friends. So, Connor jumped on a plane, flew to New York from Ireland, from Ireland to handle Habib. So, this whole thing was very real. Like, like, like we're going to stage something, or Connor's going to stage something that gets him into legal trouble yeah. in, in, in the state of New York. No, yeah. not going to happen. You know, the, but um, I was very upset about it because we were working on a new deal with Connor. We were working on a fight, and obviously this, was, this wasn't the best. Let me say this also. This is why I tell you, brothers, that all crimes are commercial crimes. All crimes have a monetary value on them. If Conor McGregor was the average person, especially if he was a so-called black man doing that, he's definitely going to prison. There's no doubt about it. For the people that he injured and for what he did, he's definitely going to prison. Well, because he could offset the value of that crime. Or he and Dana White in concert could offset the value of that crime and the bond that they put on that crime. That's why he was able to get off best thing uh the best thing that could have happened the but thing about Nurmagomedov that people have to understand is I I have a lot of respect for Connor because I've seen how he fights anyone jumps weight class whatever it is go to re immediate rematch whatever it is he wants to make the big event I did not think he would fight Nur Nurmagomedov that's how dangerous Nurmagomedov is that's how bad his style appears to be for Connor that's the guy who I thought Connor was ignoring in the build-up to the Mayweather fight and the fact that he comes and targets Dana, the style is dangerous for McGregor. Exactly. His style is dangerous for anybody. Khabib is the real deal. This guy is, is, is an incredible fighter. And I'm telling you, I said this before, and I'll say it again. Connor texted me and said, 
I'll fight this guy in Russia. And that is why he's not people, kidding. No, definitely not kidding. You know, not the best idea for him to go to Russia and fight him. That's why we're doing it in Las Vegas. But the, the mentality. That would have been phenomenal if they would have staged the fight in Russia and McGregor had actually won. Now, I believe that Khabib is going to defeat McGregor, but we're going to find out. Once again, McGregor has to take his brain, his mind to a certain place in order for him to be successful. It's the same place that all great achievers take their brain or take their mind in order for them to ascend to heights that no one else can comprehend. No matter what your field is, you have to have a great imagination, a great drive and a great belief in yourself. And that's what makes him so charismatic. The mentality of Conor McGregor is the reason that people, when you're a fight fan, you love guys that want to fight the absolute best guys that come off a two-year yeah, layoff and go yeah, right yeah, after. Yeah, Dana, that sounds great. The problem I have with, the man I has can't fought, wait to hear the, 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 the man has not fought in the UFC in two years. Right. And so to me, I mean, no, no warm-up, no anything. No. Nope. And you're going against the baddest man. Um, why did you let the best? You're going to beat the best. You always bring that up. No, this is, this is a legitimate question. I have no idea why Stephen A. Smith does not put a muzzle on this woman. Is she supposed to be the moderator or is she a co-debater? It's very obvious that Stephen A. Smith has a deal with her behind the scenes that allows her to chime in and run her mouth whenever she feels like it. Because like most so-called black males in this society, most liberal so-called black males, he's a simp. And he's scared of this woman, he's intimidated by this woman, and he does not want to appear to be overly controlling because even he understands on a subconscious level that the Caucasian man on TV can demand things of women that he cannot as a so-called black man. He knows that if he were to instruct Molly to be quiet until it's her time to speak, that that will come off as him being overly oppressive. She would probably go to the bosses on him and he could stand to be suspended again. Now, if you pay attention to the Skip Bayless debates, the moderator on the Skip Bayless show never, ever speaks out of turn, ever. But as usual, with the simp so-called black man, the liberal black man, he just allows the woman to walk all over him. Very, very sad and pathetic. Allow me to, I want to know, why did you allow this? How come you couldn't let the man get, you going to let him go in the way against, with against I the get best that he, and he's been gone for two years? So... When uh, when the fight fell out for Conor McGregor in Las Vegas, off the top of my head, I can't remember which fight it was. Uh, oh, it was, it was the first Jose Aldo fight, right. the first time they were supposed to fight. Falls out. Conor McGregor wants to move up to 170 and, and, and fight Nate Diaz. Diaz. Right. You know, I didn't love that idea. Then he loses to Nate Diaz. He wants to fight Nate Diaz again right. at 170. Right. Hated the idea, but this is right. But Conor understood that he had to rematch Nate Diaz right away. Once again, Connor understands the psychological aspect of combat sports. And also because he has the mentality of a king or of an alpha male, he knows that if he were to have gone and fought someone else at a lower weight, the specter of Nate Diaz would have still hung over his head for, for the rest of his career or until he finally got to get into the octagon with Nate Diaz again. He understood that very well. It's almost like a kid deciding that he's going to walk a different way to school because if he walks his regular way, the bully is going to take his lunch money. Connor understands that eventually you have to run into the bully. You might as well do it right now. And if he wanted to ascend to higher levels and go on to bigger and better things, he had to ask for the immediate rematch with Nate Diaz so that he could maintain that aura that was around him. Because once again, he's trying to create this Muhammad Ali image for himself in the UFC. Ali would lose fights, but then he would get the rematch and he would defeat the guy that beat him. That's what McGregor's about. Or at least that, that's the image that he's trying to be about. This is, this is the way this guy is built. This is, this is why are, people love him. I, Ronda Rousey loses a fight. You right. and I were like debating this. My yeah. thought was, I don't care who you are, how you need to build back the confidence first. Now, I know Connor's done it in the past, but even Muhammad Ali, and I bring up Ali because he wasn't just a showman. He always made the biggest fight. He always fought the most dangerous fighter. No, Max Kellerman, that's not quite true. But once again, the Muhammad Ali narrative that he always fought the toughest opponents, that's something that's pushed by the liberal sports media because Muhammad Ali's name is owned by the corporations. 
once your name is owned by the corporations, they're always going to make sure that your story is depicted in a very good light. It's very similar to what Cat Williams stated in the interview that a lot of brothers are asking me to cover in regards to Tiffany Haddish, where he states that one of the reasons why he's covered the way that he is is because he owns the rights to all of his comedy specials. See, when you own the rights to your own masters, quote unquote, in whatever field you're in, whether it's music or, or uh, comedy, or in the case of Floyd Mayweather, who owns the masters, he owns the rights to all his fights. The media is always going to cover you in an ill light because they want the proceeds from what you're able to do, from your talent. Therefore, they can advertise you in a good light to get people interested in watching that event over and over and over again. So that's why they cover Ali so, so highly. And don't get me wrong, Ali was a phenomenal fighter. But this notion that he always took the biggest fights, that's a lie. As a matter of fact, after he won his first championship in 64, he rematched List and beat him. And then he fought a lot of fighters that he got criticized for fighting. He went over to Europe and he fought a lot of fighters that people call bums. They were not necessarily bums, but they were viewed as bums. Guys like Carl Mildenberger and uh, Brian London. And he, he rematched Henry Cooper. And even in the 70s, when he came back into boxing, he fought a lot of fighters that people considered to be bums. Especially after he defeated uh, George Foreman and Zaire. You know, he fought guys like uh, Jean-Pierre Koopman and Richard Dunn and Chuck Webner. So this notion that Muhammad Ali fought Joe Frazier and Ken Norton and George Foreman six times each and all this other stuff, that's a media narrative. That he fought the toughest fighters all the time. That's a media narrative. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to remember who the fighter was that Muhammad Ali called up and asked to fight Ken Norton so that he could avoid having to fight him again because he knew that he was going to lose to Ken Norton. He also avoided fighting George Foreman again. That's why he never rematched George Foreman because he felt like he could not beat him twice. And he felt like all the damage that he took in their first fight in Zaire, um, it was not worth getting in the ring with him again in the late 70s when his, when his body and his health had declined so much. But Ali definitely avoided Ken Norton in the late 70s, especially after he got that gift decision in 1976. That fight was extremely close, but I thought that Ken Norton won that fight. And of course, they gave the decision to Ali. And Ali spent the rest of his career trying to avoid fighting Ken Norton. That's why eventually Ken Norton had to fight Larry Holmes for the heavyweight championship in the late 70s. I think in 78 they fought. And Larry Holmes was able to defeat him in one of the best heavyweight championship fights of all time. But Ken Norton had Ali's number. Just to get back to the point, no, Ali did not always fight the best competition. He fought a lot of bums. Alfredo Evangelista and a lot of these guys, they were bums. But Ali was allowed to get away with it. Why? Because he also fought great competition. No fighter in combat sports fights a great opponent every bout. That's not good for your health, man. I mean, <laughs> you can't fight a great fighter every fight. It's like these guys who try to act like Sugar Ray Robinson fought a great fighter every fight. Ray Robinson fought a whole lot of bums. Look at his record on box rec. Now, of course, he also fought very good fighters, but he fought a lot of bums. And he was allowed to knock out a guy and then fight the same guy two weeks later. That's how you get a record like 175 and 19 or whatever his record was even Ali when he came off the exile of three and a half years fought Jerry Quarry and okay. then Bonavina That's and right. then Joe Frazier right. you're putting you're putting Ali in with Frazier first fight back exactly you know what that that is what we do in the UFC you come back and you fight the best the, the reality is in this sport anybody can lose to anybody on any given day and what you don't want to do is come back and lose to Quarry you know what I mean? Which could happen. So, exactly. Which could it happen. Absolutely happen. You come back and you fight the best. After Ronda lost, I tried to make the Holly Holm fight again. But Holly Holm's team completely... Right, I hated that. that. I hated that. I hated that. Hold on, Max. I'm looking right at you, Danny. So how... Yo, Holly Holm hit Ronda Rousey with, <laughs> with the best kick I've ever seen in my life. That shit was so funny. How are you... I mean, God forbid. It's possible. Khabib is the real deal. He could lose. How be my favor. I understand that. How are you gonna feel if you just put Conor McGregor after two years right. against this monster right. and he ends up losing that fight? It's how the, how you gonna feel about that, Dana? It's the sport. It's the way that it works. It's, we literally, you don't ever have to wonder who the best is 
in the UFC Ooh, that's the because truth. we always put the best against the best. But I don't. And at the end of the day, in the UFC, it does not hurt them if their top level fighters lose. Because then you could just put them right back at the bottom of the mountain and have that fighter climb back up. So the UFC is like Las Vegas. They always win. I don't know. Always. And listen, as big time as I know Connor is, I don't know at this particular juncture because you could be the best, but the layoff could affect you. But if you look at all the great things that Connor McGregor has accomplished in his career, he's the betting underdog. So everybody feels but that way right now. It's what the fans want. It's what we it's want what to see. Exactly. We're getting it right now. And that's why we love this, it. And that's this, how the This fight is trending at 2.5 million which is a monster. Which right it's now. A monster. It's, it's out of control. Yeah. And, 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 and Magomedov isn't a household name. He's not the sexy name like Connor, but he's the real First UFC man. fight I ever went to. Yeah. Only UFC fight I ever went to. Yeah, I was at the Garden when Conor McGregor showed up and handled his business. Now I will be in Vegas for this one. I can't understand. Do you understand his point that if... It's so funny to me. And I say this all the time, and I enjoy Conor McGregor's trash talk. But it's so funny to me how people talk about Conor McGregor. He's the best. I love how he talks trash, blah, blah, blah. But when Mayweather was talking trash, that, that, to be quite frank with you, was not even as profane as Conor McGregor. It was, he was so arrogant. He's annoying. Somebody needs to beat him. So on and so forth. I wonder why that is. In this, in the, in MMA... Everyone is like a de facto one-punch knockout artist in boxing, right? Yeah. Because any false move, because everyone has a jiu-jitsu background now, they all have to be versed in everything. Right. You One false move, they'll hyperextend your limb, mm -hmm. they will choke out your ear, you can lose. So rather than risk, the, it's built into the system, rather than risk McGregor losing to somebody else, you might as well make the biggest Okay, best. fine, fine. Let me get to let me get lose, you lose for the best Before of the we world. have to let Dana go, because we didn't get to touch I, on I, John Jones. I was, that's what I was bringing up? Yeah. What's now that's up? my favorite. John Bones Jones. Yeah. yeah, well, you know what? John Bones Jones, he reminds me of that receiver formerly on the Cleveland Browns, now with the New England Patriots, Josh Gordon. Just a super, super talented fuck-up who's never going to be able to get out of his own way. And that's why I talk about drug use on this channel. Of course, I don't go to the hard drugs like cocaine and heroin and things of that nature. I, I just stay on weed because I understand how weed can lead to other things. And a so-called black man needs to stay away from that fucking weed, man. In regards to John Bones Jones, I don't think that he's ever going to be somebody who could stay clean because he's an addict. But he is super talented. Yep. Now, supposedly he's going to be allowed to come back. Is it correct that, uh, according to reports, that you're going to let him fight in 2019? Is that Yes. It? He'll, he'll, he'll probably fight early next year. Uh, so, is it going to be Daniel Cormier? Since you want the best going against the best. No, war, right? Is it going to be Daniel Cormier? What's it going to be? It's going to be fight. one of the best fighters in oh, the world. Oh, right. yeah. Excuse me. That would be a great comeback for Jones, especially since Cormier now has the heavyweight title. And Jones has always stated that he wants the heavyweight title. I think that Cormier would be a, a perfect matchup for him. Make Cormier, it Cormier, Jones. John Jones, and many people will tell you this, is probably the greatest of all time. Yes. You know? I believe Certainly the most talented. I believe John yes. Jones left the first time with the belt, left the second time with the belt. He's, Cormier. he's one of the best in the world. Yes. He said Since you want to bring up McGregor, I want to see Cormier. Since, Cormier. Since you want to say that, Cormier is the fight. Well, here's the problem. Cor here's the problem for Jones. Cormier is the heavyweight champion, and he's the light heavyweight champion. So what? So let, yes. let John Jones pick it. No. Whatever he wants. The answer Whatever yes. he wants. Get yes. that's, that's, that's the fuck. Yes, Stephen. That, that's that's right. The that's, what, that's what we want to see. Than, 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 that's what we want to see. So I, I, he was I, more I, dynamic. I think that John Jones long long is the greatest fighter to ever set foot in the octagon. And, and, and I think that if he could have kept his personal life on track, God knows what this guy would be he doing. Yeah, running around fucking prostitutes and snoring lines of coke off their titties, man. That's the problem. His own worst enemy. By the way, Mom, by the way, Mom, I'm going to give you one person I don't think we give enough to. I, I'm just a fan. Other than Bones, John Bones Jones and Conor McGregor, I do like Tyrone Woodley, too. Yeah, and he's big time. Tyrone Woodley, <laughs> he's very talented. Um, he's physically gifted, but he's like the UFC version of Bernard Hopkins or Andre Ward. He's someone that, that is extremely potent in the ring, but he's not that exciting to watch. Big time. How can you, how can you afford Cormier? Woodley, Woodley doesn't get enough love. He's big time. Dana, we're not excited, if you can tell. Yeah, we're no, not, not excited about this fight. Right. We're not going to watch it. It's going to be great. All right, October 6th, it all goes down. We'll what a sporting event this is going to be. Yeah. It's, yeah. Thank you for making the fight happen. Vegas, right? I think that as the fight gets closer, you can expect Conor McGregor to get more and more frantic. That's what I think. Because I do believe that he's a little bit intimidated by 
Nomagomedov. And I think that it's going to show as the fight approaches. But we'll see. Peace.